All right, we're back. Don't forget your gum. What? Did you answer the question correctly? Get a piece of gum. Here you go. So thanks for being here. Are you watching? Are you training on your own first? Make sure you train on your own first. Okay, this is called the difference of squares. So basically, you're looking for perfect squares to factor this. And so 25, what's the square root of 25? It's 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. And then x squared factors into x and x. And then 81 is a perfect square as well. That's why this is special, because they're perfect squares. And so 81 factors into, what's the square root of 81? So 9 times 9, good. Now notice that there's no middle term right here. Right? There's no middle term. And so what that means is that you have to cancel out. So there is no middle term. You have to make sure it cancels out. So make sure the signs are opposite, a negative and a positive. You can double check. Negative 9 times 5 is negative 45. We're just going to double check ourselves. Double check. And then this 9 times 5 is 45, and a negative 45x with a positive, we did it! So that's our answer right there. So this is regular factoring, regular factoring. So x squared factors into x and x. But think about factors of 18. So it could be 3 and 6, could be 2 and 9, could be 1 and 18, right? So you list all those factors of 18, you list them all. I usually start with 1 and go to 2 and go to 3, which would be 18, 9, and 6. But we have an end goal. We have that middle term that we're trying to equal when you add or subtract them. And so how do we get to a 3? Well, a positive 9 with a negative 2 is on 7. So that won't work. What about 9? What about 9 plus 2? That's 11. Yeah, so that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Oh, what about 6 minus 3? So 6 minus 3 is 3, which is what we want. So we're going to use factors 3 and 6. And then the sign of the middle term goes with the bigger number. Bigger number. So don't forget, the sign of the middle term goes with the bigger number. And let's double check now. Let's double check. So we got negative 3 times x is negative 3x. 6 times x is 6x. And 6x minus 3x is 3x, our middle term. So we did that right. So this one's a little bit trickier, but not too bad because you have prime numbers that you're factoring. So 3x squared factors into 3x. What's another factor of 3? 1x. And what are factors of 5? Factors of 5. So factors of 5 are um, 5 and 1. Good. Now the tricky part is, is it might be 5 and 1 or it might be 1 and 5, right? Remember, you're trying to get up to 14 and there's a minus to worry about. So if I have 5x and 3 and 1, so 3x times 1, Right, 3x times 1 is 3x. Yeah, add those together, and that's, or minus some, that's, that's not going to equal 14. Right? So we got to switch those around. So switch those around. The 1 goes there, and the 5 should go there. And that makes more sense now because if you multiply the outside terms, 3x times 5 is 15x. Woo! And so that's a positive 15x with a negative 1 times 1x. Yeah, it's going to give us 14x. We can factor. Woo! We can factor. Your guys' favorite factor. OK, what's the GCF there? What's the GCF there? Probably just a 2. So when we pull out that 2, we're left with x squared minus 10x plus 21. 21. And factors of 21. What are factors of 21? You try on your own. So we do get, um, we do get what? 7 times 3 is 21. x squared factors into x and x. Positive, whoa. 
Yeah, keep on going, let's go. So we're factoring right now, and we factored uh, 7 and 3. So we need to get a target of negative 10. So sign of the middle term goes with a bigger number. And this can either be a negative or a positive. So if we have negative 7 times x, negative 7x, um, what does this one need to be, positive? Well, if it's positive, that would be negative 4x, which is wrong. But if it's negative, that would give us negative 10x, which is the middle term. Nice, nice. Um, so we'll go ahead and make sure that's negative. And then the whole thing, don't forget the 2, don't forget the 2. Don't forget the 2 that we pulled out. So that whole thing is our final answer. Nice. Now this one's a bit of a tougher one. So they do have four in common in all of them, but what about the what about the x term? What else do they have in common? So we're looking at what x squared? Because technically this has four of them, this has three of them, this has two of them. So they all have an x squared. See it? They all have an x squared in common. So we're going to pull out the four x squared there. Nice. So pull out a 4x squared, see what we have left. And so when we pull that out, the 4s cancel. 4 take away 2, so that's x squared, plus 28 divided by 4 is uh, 7. x cubed, there's 3 of them, cancel out 2 of them. We still have an x left. Those x squareds cancel. 40 divided by 4 is 10. Yay, we factored it, GCF. But can it factor more? Don't forget to factor more if you can. And so what are factors of 10? So factors of 10 are 5 and 2. The sign of the middle term gets a plus. The only way you can get another plus is if this is a plus. And 2x plus 5x is 7x. We did it right. Woo. Okay, beautiful. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so then we go over here next. Make sure that I didn't miss anything there. Good. Okay, so now we're going to change it up from factoring to um, combining like functions as well as I'm um, doing compositions. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, compositions, right? So these two are different. These two are compositions, right? Number 15, number 16 are compositions. Um, this is also a composition as well, so we'll circle... We'll circle that one in green as well as a composition. And then this one is just like combining like terms, doing some addition basically, right? So you're going to be adding the outputs, adding the outputs basically. This one you're going to multiply two functions together, do a little bit of shell going on. And then we're going to subtract two functions. Which, when you say subtract, you just distribute the negative through and then combine like terms. So take that negative and distribute it through. Okay, so let's see here. So number 11, here we go. So f of 3, that really means f of x equals 3 is what that means. Plus g of 5, which is x equals 5. And so this is the input. We want to get an output. And after we get an output, then we want to add both outputs together. Right? You remember how to do that? So f of x equals 3. We have our function there, 3. So we're going to plug it in right there. So 3 times 3. So 3 times 3. Plug in a 3. So that's 9. And um, 9 minus 1 is 8. Good. Plus, let's go to G now and plug a 5 in. So that's 5 squared plus 2, which is 25 plus 2. Gives 5 times 5 is 25. And that's 8 plus 27. And 8 plus 27 is? Let's double check, but I think it's uh, 35. Let's double check. Answer key, let's go. Remember, try each one of these on your own. Pause me. Pause me. So it is 35. Beautiful. So our next one is um, f of x. And so that's going to be uh, 3x minus 1. And then we're going to multiply that with g of x. 
and g of x is x squared plus 2. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, do the, what should we call it, the um, shell method by distributing 3x times x squared is 3x to the third power. 3x times 2 is um, 6x. Negative 1 times x squared is negative 1x squared. And negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. So what's interesting is I don't even think we have any like terms to combine. We've got a first power, second power, third power. The only thing we need to do is uh, rearrange the order. Do you remember? We've got to put the highest power first. So that's 3x to the third power minus x squared plus 6x minus 2 is what we got. Okay, so the next one now is a composition. So you're going to take the whole function f of x and plug it into g. Okay, so let's show you what that means. Let's show you what that means. So we're taking 3x minus 1, which is our function. Ready? Boop, 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 boop. And we're getting rid of the x there. And we're going to go ahead and uh, group these together. And we're going to shrink it down. Why isn't it letting me do it? <laughs> shrink it. Okay, shrink it. Whoa, look at that. Whoa. So I'm going to shrink that down and shove that right into the equation. Okay. So that means that we have um, g of x, which is uh, squared minus 2. Or is that a plus? I think it's a plus. Okay, good. So we have x squared plus 2. And then we take f and we plug that right in there. And so f, again, f, um, is um, 3 x minus 1. Nice. And so you are going to have to uh, distribute that out. Don't forget your middle terms. Don't just do 9x squared plus 1. That's wrong. That's wrong. you got to your middle terms. Your middle terms. So 3x and 3x is uh, 9x squared. 3x times negative 1 is a negative 3x. Negative 1 times 3x is a negative, negative 3x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Don't forget to combine those together with your positive 2. So that's a plus 3. And then combine those two together. We get negative 6x. And then bring down the 9x squared. Whoa. And so that's our answer there um, for number 13. You behind the screen. Thanks for watching. Woo! Thanks for watching. So that's good, right? So make sure that we know what we're doing with these. So you're ready for the test next time. Work hard on this practice. Remember, try hard on your own. Try it on your own first. Okay, so next is um, gx um, minus f of x. Careful on subtraction. A lot of people mess up there. Right? So g of x is x squared plus 2. And then watch out, watch out, minus, watch out, minus f of x. What is f of x? So f of x is, what was f of x again? Um, 3x minus 1? 3x minus 1. So there's an invisible, can you see it? There's an invisible one there that you need to distribute through. So we get x squared plus 2 minus 3x and a plus 1. Don't forget the plus 1. Don't forget the plus 1. Okay, we can combine. What can we combine? A 2 and a 1 gives us a 3. Bring down our minus 3x plus 3. And then our highest power goes first. So x squared minus 3x plus 3. Right? Okay, this is a composition. You're going to do input 0. Get an output. Whatever your output is, is going to become the input for the next function for h. And then you'll get your final output. And that's how you do these uh, compositions, right? That's how you do these compositions. Okay. So g of 0. So first of all, we have a 0. And so it's x squared plus 2, right? Here we go. So we do g of x equals 0. Plug it in. We get 0 squ x squared plus 2 is 0 squared plus 2, which just gives us a 2. Because 0 squared is 0 and goes away. So then we take that 2 now and plug it in for h. Remember the h, the input? So now we do h of x equals 2 because that was the output becomes the input for the next one. And then we go to h. And h is that beautiful square root of 3x squared plus 4. Ugh. 
So let me go square root of, and let me do um, 3 times x squared plus 4. But, 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 in place of the x, what are we going to put? Boop, 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 boop. So we're going to take this 2, and we're going to plug it in there in place of the x. And 2 squared is 4, and 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 plus 4 is 16. And the square root is 16 because it's still square rooted, it's still square rooted. The square root of 16 is 4. Beautiful. Okay, what about if we have to take a whole function of g and plug it into f? Remember that f o g of x just means f of g of x, which means you take the whole function of g and plug it into f. So what's f again? Remember what f is? Um, so f is a 3x minus 1. So 3x minus 1. Look how I left a really big space there for the x. And the reason why is we're going to go ahead and take g. Um, and g, what is g again? g is uh, x squared plus 2. And so we're going to take that x. That's supposed to be green. So we're going to take that x squared, g of x is x squared plus 2. And so what we're going to do now, remember, is the x, don't, don't multiply the x's, the x totally, the x totally goes away, okay? It totally goes away. It totally goes away completely. Um, I want to do this color to code to show it to you, but it's not working. Okay, there you go. Okay, so the x totally goes away, and x squared plus 2 goes in its place. You see that? And then simplify, distribute it through, so we get 3x squared plus 6, and then minus 1. And don't forget, 6 minus 1 is, simplify, simplify. Yeah, 3x squared plus 5. It's round number 17 next, halfway there. Thanks for watching. So tune in to our next video where we are going to show you number 17, do more compositions, and evil multiplication. Why don't they put a dot there? Don't be lazy, mathematicians. Put a dot there. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching. Next video, let's go.